here is a slightly different version of the file that has, uh, you know, for the most part, shadows and highlights throughout, both on the floor and on the individual pieces of furniture and things like that. So if we just zoom in to take a look quick, perhaps at the living room furniture, you can see it's still really quite simple. Uh, but what we have here are some simple shadows on the cushions of the sofa, some highlights on the back, for example, where the sun is coming in, uh, some highlights and shadows on the chair and things like that, a kitchen counter, so that when we back up from it, instead of looking completely flat, this actually starts to look somewhat three-dimensional and it makes it just a little bit more interesting. When you get to a point where you're very happy with how your floor plan is looking and you would like to uh, email it, show it to someone else, put it in a presentation, into InDesign or something like that, what you're going to want to do is have a flat version of this file. What that means is we're going to take all of these layers that we've created off to the side and squish them all down so it's just one layer, one final complete image. Now, what I highly, highly recommend doing is save multiple versions of your file. So save one that has all of these layers so that if you change your mind about something, um, you know, anything like that in the future that you always have a version that you can come back to and make edits to. Because if you flatten this, save it, that's it. It's going to be kind of permanently fused together. So what I'm going to do right now is first I can just um, come up to file and do a save as. And when I say save as, what I'll do then is perhaps make a version of my file with the word flat at the end or something like that. Um, you'll notice that it's a PSD here, a Photoshop file. That's what we've been working in. And I can save it as that for now. So I'll hit save. Hit OK. Now, it simply changed the file name so that I'm working in a different file, but that doesn't mean that anything actually happened to the file. Just naming it that didn't do anything. What I need to do is come over to my Layers menu, and in the upper right-hand corner, there's that small button uh, with a few little lines and an arrow. If I click that, I can come down to the near bottom where it says Flatten Image. When I click that, Photoshop will think for a minute, and you'll see then that it took all of those individual layers and fused them all together. At this point, if I you know, did that by accident or quickly changed my mind, I can Control Z or undo and bring them all back. So at this point, I can still save it if that was a mistake. But once I move forward, um, you know, you're really kind of stuck. So once again, I will flatten image, and it will shrink it. Now, if I had had um, you know, a few layers turned off or something like that, when I went to flatten that, it would have said, do you want to discard these hidden layers? So that's something to need to be paying attention to. If you had turned off layers because you didn't want to use them anymore, you know, feel free to say OK. But if you just simply forgot that you had some layers off, you're going to want to hit Cancel and go back and fix that, or when it flattens it, that information will be gone. So for example, here I had turned off some information on my chair, and maybe that's not what I want it to look like. So I'll hit Cancel, then I go back in, turn on the layers, layers that I want, and do it over again. So now once it's flat, since I had previously gone in and done a save as and named this with the word flat at the end, I might just go up and hit save and now I will in fact have a flat version of the file. This is a PSD, that's Photoshop's native format, and that's a great file to be working in when you're in Photoshop. But if you are going to be trying to open this on a computer where you didn't have Adobe software, you know, emailing this to someone or something like that, uh, this file format might not be the best for what you want to do. So in that case, what I'll do is go up to File and do another Save As. Okay, but this time, and, you know, I could change the name, I guess, but instead of changing the name, what I'm going to do is come down to where it says Format. 
So if you're going to be taking your files into InDesign or something, a Photoshop file is great. But like I said, if you need to uh, make it something that's a little more compatible with other computers, other software, we can come in and change it to something else. A Photoshop file does not compress, so that's going to give you the best quality. So if you want to keep really high quality, what you might want to do is change it to a TIFF. A TIFF will still remain a relatively beefy file, uh, but you won't lose any of your image quality. So if I want to save it as a TIFF, I can just hit save if I don't want to change the file name, and it will give us compression options. So I don't want to change, you know, I don't want to compress it or anything like that. Um, if there was transparency, right down here where it's grayed out, save transparency, I would want to check that if I wanted to have areas of it be see-through. Okay, I don't have that, so it's not an option. So then I can say, okay, and now this is actually a TIFF version. Once again, if I go to File and Save As, Another very common format that you might be using is JPEG. Uh, this is what a lot of digital cameras use. It's the format that uh, people kind of default to. It's what you think to save things as. If I go to JPEG and say save, it will give me some options here. So JPEGs compress your file. Uh, and what you can do is bring this all the way up to maximum or if you're looking to shrink your file, you can bring this down. And what that will do is kind of average out your pixel information, but it's also, if you see here, making your file size smaller. So if I have it at the quality of six in medium, it's about 2.7 megabytes. But if I bring that up to maximum, you'll see that it'll be, I think, around 10 or so. Uh, the thing with JPEGs is basically what it's doing is looking at a group of pixels and saying, you know, these are all very similar in color, so I will just make them all the same color. So you don't want to be working in a JPEG or doing a lot of saving, or each time you do, it will get a little bit uh, degraded each time. So right now, you know, this is fine. Maybe you want to put it in a presentation or email it to a lab partner, something like that, so this will be okay. But it's just something to keep in mind. So I'll say okay. And now we'll have a PSD version a TIFF version and a JPEG version of my flat rendering and also the original PSD with all of the layers. Now at this point you could also do things, you know, if you decide, wait a minute, I want to, you know, add a signature or something like that, we could have done that easily while we still had all the layers open or we can just do it with this flattened out image to make it a little easier. Since I have this um, JPEG version open, I guess I could work with that. And really, all I'm going to be doing is you know, bringing in another piece of information. Maybe I had done a signature someplace else, I'd scan it in, or I'd done it in Illustrator, uh, something like that. All I would have to do is file and place it in here. So I can go to File, Place, and grab my signature or logo or whatever it might be, say place, and you'll see that it's bringing it in here. So here's my signature. Maybe I want to put it down in the corner. And when you do file in place, you're bringing something in as a smart object. So at this point, we can very easily scale our, our logo, our signature, whatever it might be. I just held down the shift key there to keep it proportional. Hit enter to get rid of that frame, and now I have my signature on the page. Since it's on its own separate layer, I can kind of move that around wherever I want. And if you notice over in the Layers menu, it says Signature on the layer because that was the file name I already had, and it has this little smart object thumbnail that's reminding me that this is a smart object. So what that means and the short version is that you could not come in and very easily erase and manipulate it. Um, it's protecting it so it doesn't get all pixelated. If you decide that you actually do want to make some changes to it, all you have to do is right click and say rasterize layer and it gets rid of that smart object. But you don't want to do that until you're really happy with the size, basically. 
I could also come in and do other things by adding another layer and you know I could come in with a paintbrush for example and maybe I want to you know draw an underline under my name oh it's a little light something like that you know who knows but we can come in add those little details and when we're happy with it we can once again flatten it do a file save as choose our file type and all those other types of things and hit save 